My name is Dr. Savvy, and we're back with another show. Um, this is the second of the shows that we've done. We've had a bit of a break for uh, Christmas uh, and the New Year and the festive seasons, whatever you're celebrating out there. Uh, so we were on just before Christmas, and we're back with the second show. Now, the show is called Seeking Within, and um, it's quite an interesting title in the context that it talks about what is it that inspires you as an individual. You could be somebody who, as a teacher, or somebody who you know, is really into music. You know, ultimately, something that has a passion that really drives you. Ultimately, it's about inspiration and motivation. They kind of go hand in hand in one sense. Um, so today, we've got a really special show for you. I'm joined by my co-host here, Mr. Gurpreet. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Good to see be back. Sammy, how have you been? The, the, the double twosome, you know? The troublesome the twosome. Gruesome twosome. Uh, the gruesome twosome, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't give you too much trouble. Um, but it's good that you came down to the studio, and it's good to have you uh, share in your own personal experiences as well, because you do a lot of work in Shabbos with Dwara. Uh, and it's quite uh, interesting the kind of daily challenges that you come across. Yes, yes, definitely so. One of the things I wanted to really explore was um, something about Sikh history and Sikh art. Um, and, you know, in one sense, there's a link between art and history. Uh, they either go hand in hand, or you see a piece of art and you're inspired to know more about it. So we're also um, really grateful for a couple of really great guests that we got with us today. First of all, we've got Jason Askew. A uh, very well-renowned artist. Wahe Guru Ji Ki Khalsa, Wahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Yeah, thanks very much for coming. Um, and we've also got Amapal Singh, who actually has been on the show before, ages and ages ago, I think, last year. Uh, and or was it the year before when we were talking about some work that you're doing with the European Union? Uh, but, that's right, yeah. Wahe Guru Ji Ki Khalsa, Wahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Um, yes, we've been... Um, on the show last year, I think. So, uh, you know, nice to be back. Yeah, it's good because one of the things that you're really interested in is, I mean, we see kind of a, a multiple uh, set of dimensions here. We see every day what happens in the Gurdwara, kind of things that, you know, people are interested in and the daily challenges. We've got somebody who's really passionate about art and we've also got someone who is really passionate about history. And uh, it's interesting, you, you were saying just before the program that you've worked with uh, historians before, haven't you? And you kind of find that combination really interesting, yeah? Yes, it's a very good combination to have an artist and a writer working together, particularly on historical projects. Right. It's better that way. It's a, it creates a good balance. So tell us a little bit about your background in terms of, sorry to interrupt, your background, but where, where did you get this interest from? How did you kind of um, acquire this sense of um, seeing that there was a link towards history and art? Um, I've always been interested in art. I mean, you know, I went to the Chansberg Art Ballet Music School in the age of 15, 16, and the interest arose from there. Um, I've been working for a long time in this field, on and off throughout right. my life. I've worked okay. on newspapers, but I've always stuck to historical artwork. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. And then what about in this particular case, how did you get involved in, um, I guess, some of the art that you're involved in right now? Oh, you mean in terms of the Sikh art? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, um, I was very interested in uh, you know, the, the, Sikh, uh, the Anglo-Sikh wars. I first became aware of it when uh, I found out about the Battle of Aliwal because there's a place in South Africa called Aliwal Shoal and that was named after Sir Harry Smith because he was a governor general in South Africa after the Sikh Wars in 1846. Um, and it didn't sound like an African name. I wanted to find out you know, where it came from and what this meant. And then obviously I found out about Sikhs, you know, the Sikh religion, the Sikh nation, you know, the history of the Punjab. Um, and I wanted to, uh, I felt it would look very good in paint in paintings because it's essentially a Napoleonic uh, battle, a Napoleonic um, type of um, struggle. Yet in India, in the Punjab, well, I mean, you know, it's debatable. The Punjab's part of India, and it's from there that I wanted to uh, find out more. Um, I found out more when I worked for the Gurkhas, and I did a commission for the Brigade of Gurkhas here in the UK about six, seven years ago when I moved over here. Um, we were working on the Indian Mutiny as a theme, or the first Indian War of Independence, 1857. Um, and it wasn't widely known that a lot of the uh, British Army, British Army who assaulted Delhi, uh, were in fact made up of Sikhs, the same Sikhs who they'd been fighting five years beforehand. Right, because there was a, effectively that transition. So, Amrapal, tell us, I mean, you've, let's go back as well. I mean, we asked uh, Jason the question about his passion. Where do you get this kind of interest for history? You know, what drives you every day to say, actually, I want to know a little bit more about what happened here. I mean, obviously, Jason thought, oh, that's interesting. What about this name? Where does it come from? You know, let's do a little bit of research. You know, when did you first kind of start thinking, actually, I'm really interested in this? 
Well, I, I think everyone's got their own interests, and um, you know, I've been interested in history um, from a really early age. In fact, uh, you know, I remember when I was um, six or seven, you know, reading books on World War Two, World War One. So, you know, it, everyone's got their own interests, and uh, you know, Jason's got art. You know, I've got history, and uh, um, I just find it terribly important um, subject. You know, it's um, it's something that we as a community are not really um, doing as much as we should uh, about, you know. Um, uh, and I think, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say most of our history is actually undiscovered at the moment. Um, so hopefully, you know, in the years to come, try and uh, sort of uh, unravel as much, much more as we can, really. Um, so so it, it's a pioneering thing. It's not something that... Uh, um, you know, there's a there's not a there's not an awful lot of books about the uh, anglo sikh wars, for instance. You know, uh, the number of really good books uh, you can count on one hand. Um, you know, whereas something like World War One, World War Two, there's literally thousands of books. You know, and that's that's the kind of situation we need: uh, more writers, more books on the Did subject. You, um, the um, the benefit of doing that is I'll, I'll ask Gupreet this question: mm -hmm. um, Do you think history is important to society? Um, do you think it's a way of breaking down barriers between, you know, different communities. I mean, you know, you cut us, we're all the same. doesn't matter what color you are. Um, you know, we've, but the thing is we have differences in terms of maybe the strength of diversity comes in the fact that we come from different places, you know, but we're all in one, in one society in one mm -hmm. sense. But there's this, I, I heard somebody recently saying that there's a difference between integration and assimilation, you know, um, integration where people respect each other for who they are, and assimilation is when effectively in one sense, you've lost your identity. I know it's a debatable point, but ultimately, um, you know, do you think the role of the Gurdwara, I mean, is to provide that level of education as well as uh, providing support to people that come in? Well, the Gurdwara definitely has a role in uh, teaching, and history is part of um, teaching. We as Sikhs need to know what our past is to understand why we are here in the present and what our role is in the present. If we ignore our history, we start to ignore our teachings. Uh, in particular, when you start looking at Sikh history and the Sikh battles, uh, you know, just uh, not only just during the Guru's periods, but after the Guru's periods, at the you know the time of Bandar Singh Bahadur, the strategies used they're quite fascinating, and you actually start thinking about, you know, the time the times that people were in, what their issues were, you know, quite often we take a look at these and we look at it from our perspective that the comfortable life we're in nowadays. We don't realize that, uh, you know, for Banda Singh Bahadur to take his army to Saran that actually took so, such a long time and they actually split into different groups and they were working and uh, to keep their army together uh, to earn money and to earn food as they got to Saran. You know, it wasn't just some easy thing that suddenly just happened. There's a lot of logistics behind it and uh, you don't start to realize that until you start to actually look into the history and start to see the time scales of uh, the time it actually took. and. Uh, uh, also, with the other battles, the battles that took place during Maharaja Ranjit Singh's times, you know, uh, with his general, Hari Singh Nalva, and the tactics used sometimes, the odds were against them, but how they managed to overcome those odds and uh, win the battle. How important that is that, I mean, I guess, you know, something's important if you feel passionate about it and you've developed an interest in it. You know, you might, like me, for example, and you like, you know, different kinds of music, we like jazz, we like soul. You know, you know, we're interested in that, so therefore we follow that, right? Yes. But how do, do you think the Gurdwara should create a sense of, of interest? Um, how do you, I mean, well, I remember when I was a kid at school, uh, school and, and uh, we were playing and this guy said, well, oh, listen to this tape, it's a great tape. You know, and I, I went home and I listened to it and I really got into yeah. the music after that. But then, th is that the role of the Gurdwara to say, actually, um, here is aspects of history, you know, here are some paintings, here are some think, pictures, here are some, yes. here are some leaflets that talk about your history and then therefore it might inspire kids the role, to want to know more. Yeah, the role of the Gurdwara is to provide the basis of opportunity. Um, just as you were saying with music, there are many different tastes. Some people are going to get into history, some are not. Some would be interested in other things. But uh, we, it, the role is to provide opportunity. That way Sangat members can come and get things started. And if there is, you know, 
a lot of Sangat who are interested in doing something historical, then definitely a Gurdwara management should push to encourage that and provide facility for that. In a way, we at the Gurdwara are like an incubator. Therefore, if someone comes with an idea, we see how can we develop that. We've got the infrastructure, they've got the idea, and it's a, it's a partnership. But you need a committee that's open enough to those kind of concepts. Yes, you do. do. Uh, but, yeah. uh, and also willing to spend the money on, on It does on require that. money to be spent and it does require time. Uh, but uh, doing these things is what actually goes uh, probably, you know, in, when you look at Gurdwara management, it's quite simple to just stick to the routine. It's safe, you can't go wrong, and, uh, you know, it's easy. But when you start to step out of your comfort zones, that's when you come to the challenges. But that's also where you have the greatest aspect of learning, not just as a committee, but for your sangha too. Yeah. I mean, I guess one of the things that in the States that's quite interesting, where they've got the Seat Research Institute and they do publications. They've got a Punjabi Digital yes. Library. They've got, um, they've got some initiatives to help look at the, the past, kind of record historical references, and then it's there for everyone to kind of get that, you know, because they think it's important yeah. to, to preserve heritage. In one sense, what you're doing, Jason, is that you're, you're, you're interpreting, you're doing research, um, you're working with a historian, and then you're able to reproduce um, a scene. No? Yes. That, is that not the method that you use? Yes, it is. Um, I've just got to say something about the aspect of art. Um, it's not just illustration. I'm not just sort of... Um, you know, regurgitating sure, facts like, oh, you know, yeah. in 1846 such and such happened, a battle here and this and that. I mean, it's, it's like a military history sort of mm. monologue, you know, it's right. like, oh, go on, whatever. You know, like, who's interested? You know, I mean, historians will be, but most people out there, it's like, you know, who cares? Um, <laughs> to me, what really stands out about this, it's not so much whether it's a 1984 or whether it's a battle in the anglo Sikh wars. It's the spirit of people. That's really what I'm trying to bring across. Now, yeah. the thing, I mean, obviously I'm not a, a Sikh as such. You know, I mean, I, um, I'm not really religious at all in any sense in terms of organized religion. Um, but I do believe in spiritualism. And what comes across to me that there's a very strong spiritual angle in terms of Sikhism, particularly with uh, the way the Sikhs stood up first against the um, Muslim oppression and then against well, British annexation and oppression. What I'm trying to capture in these pictures is the fighting spirit of the, uh, of the um, Sikh, uh, Sikh Khalsa, really, and of the uh, Akali. Or maybe in one sense, not necessarily, uh, it is fighting, but it's also fighting for freedom and fighting for liberty and fighting for, I'm going to put words in your mouth, but, you know, for the, for the context that it's about uh, what is right. And, and not to be oppressed. That's you know? absolutely, you know, the, the, the core of what I'm trying to bring across. Yes, I mean, they're not, they're not fighting for a government. They're not fighting to impose a system on anyone. They're fighting for their own personal freedom. Um, and, you know, there's a very strong anarchistic, anarchic message in that, and that's what I like. I think that they're fighting for their way of life. They're fighting not to be railroaded by anyone and fighting not to be sort of um, turned from free people into uh, a nation of servants. Uh, you know, before I got involved in this, I did a, a lot of work on the Anglo-Zulu Anglo, Anglo Wars, obviously coming from South Africa. And essentially what happened there was that the British marched into Zululand, what was known in Natal, Zululand. And this was a, I mean, they, they were also, um, I wouldn't say they were a, a libertarian nation as such. I mean, they were quite sort of authoritarian in their own way, the Zulu nation, Shaka and all that. But the result of that war is that they were turned from a nation of warriors and uh, people had a sense of self into a nation of servants and garden boys that were just there to provide, right. you know, to basically uh, to be there for the convenience and beck and call of a, a, a white community. And I think that's wrong. You know, uh, you know and I get the same feeling that uh, this happened in the Punjab with the Muslims when they, when, you know, the, the when Mughal Sikhism The Mughal Empire. In. Yes, yeah. they, the, the Mughal Empire. Um, you know, they didn't want uh, people in the Punjab or Sikhs to have their own sense of self. They yeah. just wanted to assimilate them. And if they didn't do it, well, you know, you've seen all the pictures in the Good Warriors. Mm. They were chopped in half, boiled alive, God knows what. I think, yeah. you know, so it's that angle that I'm really pushing for is spirit, the, 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 you know, the, the spirit to stand up for yourself. And I think what's interesting also is, around. Uh, is the fact that it's a you know, very good point about standing up. But it's also not necessarily standing up for yourself, but it's also about standing up for other people. Now, Guru Dayak Bahadur is a you know, a brilliant, brilliant example of somebody who, who gave his life for the freedom of other religions to, to be able to, you know, part, you know do their own, um, be, be free to practice their own religion, right? So 
And it, you know, it's very rare to find that in any society where, you know, even Guru Gobind Singh, who, you know, who all his, his four sons and, you know, his mother and his, his family, obviously his father, Guru Degh Bahadur, all of them were lost uh, in terms of their lives because they felt it was important for the freedom for the, all the communities at the time, that no one should be um, ethnically cleansed. And in, even in the, in the last 20, 30 years, you see ethnic cleansing happening, you know, in, you know, Eastern Europe and some of those countries that had that issue. You know, it, it's just that mankind doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to learn, does he? You know, he just, he says, well, okay, we'll just dominate that. we we'll just take it over. we we'll just take it apart. But I think Sikh community are the ones that stand up for other people. I mean, yeah, I agree with this totally. Um, and it's not just way back in the 1600s, fighting the 1680s, fighting the Mughals. Um, I, uh, I've been doing some work on Bindranwal in 1984, and to me it's, that, it's the very same message. Um, Bindranwal has said the same thing, that everyone should be free to practice their own religion, basically be good people. Um, and I think that's a very important message. You know, in that sense, he wasn't institutionalized at all. He was de-institutionalized, because most religions you know, seek to actually you know, control people. I mean, whatever they are. I mean, it's a failing when a religion becomes institutionalized. It's not the true message. Right. But I mean, you know, obviously, there's so many, <laughs> there are as many different views of religion as there are you know, sort of fish in the sea. Each one right. is different. Yeah. Um, yeah. All heading for the same goal, though. <laughs> um, I was going to say, um, Amapal, tell us a little bit about um, some, of the, some of the work that you've done, um, specifically about the book that um, mm. Uh, Jason must have picked up and said, I must give Amapal a call, you know? Yeah, um, well, I always had a hankering for, um, you know, writing books. And uh, uh, what I noticed was that uh, there wasn't an awful lot of new books coming out on the Anglo-Sikh Wars. And uh, even though there's a, there's a, there's a um, uh, you know, there's a need for it, um, and uh, not just right, in our community, uh, yeah. but in the, you know, in the European community, uh, in fact, most of the sales from my books are actually to you know English people, really? and uh, okay. a lot of the emails I get, um, you know, a lot of the the contacts I get on Facebook and stuff, they're from Europeans, you know, from English. And uh, in fact, uh, I made a very good um, uh, German friend, you know, through the book. And uh, so it's not just our community, you know. There's a lot of interest worldwide. So um, the the last um, sort of major book that came out uh, prior to mine was uh, around about 1970. So that was 40 years ago. Wow. Um, you can get your books on the so, Kindle, right? Sorry? We can get your books on the Kindle, right? Uh, you can't get it on the Kindle at the moment. Hopefully you can in the future. Okay. Um, but you, it's, you said um, you were working on one for the Kindle, weren't you? I'm working on um, well, my, I'm working on a new book, uh, which we're hoping to get out on the Kindle as well. Right. Um, the my Current publishing company, they're a um, little bit slow on getting onto the Kindle. You know, they they're, they're a, a military um, sort of specialist company, and uh, uh, they like uh, doing hardback books rather than, than uh, the Kindle. But uh, um, you know, there's arguments, um, you know, pro and against Kindle, uh, especially when it comes to nonfiction. Uh, most people. For non-fiction, they like you know a physical book. Okay. So, but that's not to say you know, Kindle books won't sell. But uh, um, but anyway, yeah, that's how I got into it, and um, um, and that goes for uh, a lot of the um, Sikh history. You know, there's just, there's just nothing there at the moment. Uh, all of our records um, are in Lahore. You know, all the um, you know Darbar records, yeah. Maharaja Ranjit Singh's. Uh, uh, period records. Um, they're in Lahore. Uh, they're not written in English or Punjabi. Uh, they're written in Persian. So, you know, 99% of our history is undecoded at the moment, really? simply, simply because none of us know Persian. That's uh, Farsi, that's right. And um, um, so it's really tragic, you know, our own history is something we can't read. So, is, is, is um, so hopefully, you know, something will be done about that. I was going to say, point. what can be done about it? Is there an interest at the level, um, you know, or, you know, the SCPC and people like that? Are, do, are they interested in that context? Do they want to preserve buildings? Do they want to preserve history? Do they want to commission a project to go away and, you know, try and go to Lahore or get some of this, uh, these items, translate them, publish them? Where, where does that drive come from, you know? If, if the whole point of this program is seeking within, 
Right, you know, yeah. where, where are we seeking, who are we seeking that's going to do this stuff? Do we have to ask for that somehow? Regrettably, uh, we don't have much funding at all for these sort of things. You know, what it needs is some sort of large body to, you know, come to, you know, people like us who are interested in these sort of things. Right. Send us over to Lahore, you know, um, you know, finance us and, um, you know, um, let us stay there for a few years and it, it, it's not just a few years you know this is a lifetime's work and, and it needs not just one person it needs loads of people you know it's like trying to to go into the British Museum you know one person and trying to catalogue everything and write about everything it's just too much there right, yeah. so we need more uh, you know philanthropists really and maybe you know the Gurdwaras can uh, um, you know get into to sort of funding you know local sort of uh, talent if you like or yeah. whatever um, or uh, or financing, you know, art as well. You know, that's a, that's another thing we're not uh, sort of aiming at in our community at the moment. What I think is quite interesting. We were talking about this earlier on, and I think there's also a link to Gudwaras as well. But um, you know, where things are commissioned. You know, Gudwaras may commission a piece of work. Um, so this is really more uh, was a question for both of for both of you, really. I mean, for you, you know, for someone working in the Gudwara, then it's interesting you've got. Um, Got paintings there. Might be interesting to see different paintings from from different parts of history. But obviously, it's going to take money to to kind of you know you've got to pay someone to you know to do that. Yes. On the other part, you, <coughs> a lot of your commissions have come from um, the MOD, right? Yes. Um, and um, uh, you know, particularly, it would be good. Um, so I guess I've got two questions. One is for you to say, where's the pictures in the Gurdwara? And for you, I was going to ask you really. Um, you've been asked by um, you know departments to to do to do commissions, right? I mean, there's a drive obviously coming from there. Where, where's that motivation coming from? Um, no, um, normally I, I either approach British regiments on my own or they approach me on their own. Okay. It's done sort of privately. Um, right. There's no drive as such, it's up to you. Okay. <coughs> um, I mean, if we move on to the issue of the Gurdwaras. Um, actually, we at uh, Central Gurdwara, we did identify a space which we've got where we would actually love to actually commission a painting. So, you know, we need to think of what do we want on that painting. Uh, we do want something historical. Interestingly, uh, one of the <laughs> sketches that Jason has done over there is of uh, Captain Hardit Singh Malik with the Sopwith camel. He was one of the early presidents of uh, our Gurdwara Saab. Uh, in fact, it was uh, his daughter who Kushwan Singh met here in London and uh, ultimately married. Really? So there is history even in the Gurdwara as well. I know, well, definitely Central Gurdwara because we're from 1908. But, uh, you know, there is history within our community here in the UK, which is just waiting to be explored. We do have a military history. Very good. I mean, uh, coming back to the commission thing, I, I really would love to get you to tell us the story about the most that painting that you did and how you, how you decided to um, not necessarily follow out the orders that were given to you. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. <laughs> no, um, yeah, uh, too many late nights doing yoga. Um, no, um, that was to do the, <coughs> sorry, the Battle of Aliwal. Right. I got a commission for, um, it was going to be for a British regiment or no, a British individual a military guy to do the Battle of Aliwal, the 16th Lancers. Um, and I did the painting, it was a very large picture, six foot. <clears throat> but um, I thought that the Sikhs and the Akalis were so interesting in the painting that I gave them the, I emphasized them rather than the British Lancers. And when, the, um, <coughs> when they actually saw the painting, um, the client said to me that I'd have to take the Sikhs out because uh, okay. I'd overemphasized them. And, uh, you know, he wanted more of the emphasis to be on the um, on the 16th Lancers, the British Regiment. And I said, no, I won't do that. And I thought that the Akalis and the Sikhs were the most interesting part of the picture. Otherwise, it just looks like another military painting. You know, and I've done so many of them, I thought it was starting to get a bit dull. Um, so I said, well, no, I'm, I'm not actually going to change this. It will mess up the painting. And uh, <coughs> I thought he was wrong, you know, because, um, again, I like the idea of this Akali from the Punjab standing up and giving whoever was invading his country, hell for leather. You know, it's a good image. Um, so I eventually said, no, I won't change it. So they said to me, fine, we won't buy it. So I said, okay, we'll take a hike. I've had enough of you, you know. Okay. So you sometimes you've got to stand up for your Sense own. of principles, absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not very nice and you've got to pay rent and all that. You know, right. people get, 
you know, but I mean, uh, you know, you've got to, the buck stops here sometimes. Um, anyway, it, uh, it was a very good stand to make, you know, right. a very noble stand, but probably not a very f sensible financial decision. However, luckily, about seven, eight weeks later, I got an email from a Sikh collector in Canada, um, a dentist, and he said, no, he loves it, he wants it. So I thought, oh, thank God, you know. Mm. So I had to tidy it up a bit because, right. um, you know, I'd, I'd got so fed up, I'd taken the picture and chucked it in the backyard, you know, enough of this. Because um, no one at that time was really coming forward from, there were no British people interested, Anglo-Sikh war enthusiasts, and there weren't any Sikhs interested. So that kind of... That email really gave me a lot of faith. I thought, God, you know, I'm not wasting my time with this. Because, right. you know, it's a very lonely occupation to paint the stuff. Because you're really living in your own head. I mean, I'm a pal, no, from writing. You sit there and sometimes you wonder, you know, what the hell am I well, doing? You get like a, is it like writers get writer's block and stuff? Do no, I don't, I don't get writer's block. You get sort of depressed, you know. And right. you think, well, you know, you're on your own and you're living in your own little world and you start to go a bit mad. Right. <laughs> you know, you think you're a bit loopy. You know? mm. But, I mean, anyway, I've found ways of dealing with that too. <laughs> Yoga. <laughs> I mean, talking about the Kalis, I mean, just if you look at these two paintings which are behind us, and you've really shown the Kali Nahang uh, horseman and, you know, charging down. And uh, uh, you've, you know, shown so much details like the Karaze War. How, how did you find out about the Kali Nahangs? Oh, um, you know, the Dasta Bhaga. Uh, yes, yes. I know, I found out. Um, through doing yoga, I found out about um, uh, that group that do Shasta Vidya. Um, was it uh, Nida Singh? Yes, and I went along to some of his uh, classes, and um, everyone was there in their um, turbans, and they're all kicking each other's heads in. I thought, oh, that's re <laughs> really interesting. How do they do that? But I mean, I, I actually liked, I mean, I mean, that was a superficial judgment. I mean, actually, when you got into it, there's a lot of knowledge there. And he's trying to keep, again, he's basically doing the martial arts, what Amapal is doing in writing, and I suppose I'm trying to do with, with painting, is keep a sense of Sikh tradition, or Sikh, you know, Sikh and Vedic tradition alive, really. Yeah, I guess there's a gray area between what's religion and what's culture, right? Uh, I mean, so, Sometimes they're very distinct. You know, I think often they're distinct, but I think there are certain things that kind of that come across, which is like a martial art will be something that will be inherent within that religion. And some people choose to do it, and some people don't. But you know, um, you know, it just goes. And there's a lot of you know a, a lot of discipline in that uh, gutka or whatever. You know, um, it's it's a powerful uh, martial art. Yeah, no, I, I definitely thought so, and I like the sort of um, the illusions. You know, I mean, obviously it's a bit of a, a problem with 1984, um, yeah. but uh, what I came across was that, you, you know, the, a lot of the forms are based on sort of um, Durga or, you know, um, was it Vishnu and, you know, the, you know, the fighting forms, you know, the, so, um, but of course, obviously that's a bit of a problem in 1984, you know. So, so when, you, when you mentioned 1984, I mean, obviously you've mentioned um, uh, Janelle Singh Bindrawada, right? Yeah. What about... Um, one of the things, and we, I think we had a brief discussion about this, was, um, you know, the thing that's in the back of all of the Sikhs is the, you know, I think 28 years this year, or 29 years, I think, since the, the, um, uh, the Holocaust that took place in November time. Right? There are movies that have been made, there's literature that's been written. I um, think art has a part to play in that, in terms of communicating uh, the kind of, the atrocities that took place during that period. Do they, do they preserve an element of keeping that, keeping that point in history alive, because you know the Jewish community have done extremely well to make sure that people know about it. There's a Holocaust museum in the in the U.S. Uh, there are movies that are made about it, you know. But we we don't seem to have a lot after 29 years, 28 years. We don't have a lot of, you know. I feel really sad sometimes when when kids don't know about it, you know. And then sometimes because there's no media about it, the actual real reason why you know the real perpetrators still walk around, but they don't. But, the, you know, the, and as time passes, it seems to be forgotten about, you know? Perhaps I can answer that. Uh, I think in our community, we're not uh, targeting enough on the arts, um, you know, whether it be authors or, um, you know, artists. Um, you know, I don't know of any good artists in our community at the moment. Um, and Jason's doing this great stuff here, and I'm hoping that people all sort of... Uh, uh, get some sort of inspiration from this, you know. But uh, in terms of 1984, 
very, very few artists out there, you know, and some people are doing some work, but uh, there's just not enough, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's one of our failings of our community is that we, we, we just don't direct kids towards, you know, arts and sports and, uh, you know, books, um, you know, these sort of things which are maybe, you know, financially less lucrative, but they're very, very important, you know. Um, I think it's know, maybe the... Culture becomes very one-dimensional if you don't have these things, you know. I thought we were in that, like, maybe the third generation, really, even you look at it from the 1950s, I think one of the issues might be is that we're still living in, and, and there's nothing, we can't, we're not saying anything bad about this, but we're survivalist, you know? There's always this issue about, you know, um, some people have got people to support in another country, or they've established themselves here, and it, it's taking time for them to do it, or what, what kind of background they've come from, whether or not they feel they need a solid financial base before they can continue. Um, you know, but then, you know, we have this, like, 15 million pound gurdwaras, so there is money in the system, yeah. or five million pound schools, you know, and I'm sure there are opportunities within those kind of curriculums to explore more. But what I would say is that maybe, you know, as a suggestion, we've got an opportunity to maybe contact, um, you know, the, the Department of Skills and Education and say to them, look, when you're doing a curriculum on history, maybe it's a good idea to talk about Queen Victoria and her relationship with uh, Maharaja Dalit Singh. You know, um, you know, why are there watercolours of uh, the Leap Singh in Osborne House uh, on the Isle of Wight? You know, not a lot of people know that until they turn up there. It's, you're not told about that. I mean, I, you know, we're born here, we, we've been to the schools here. I don't think I remember anything being told to me, maybe there's a bit more now, about um, the involvement of the British in India. Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, during the last sort of three, four decades, you know, the school curriculums really changed. You know, in the old days, they used to talk, talk uh, much more about the empire. And uh, they probably did cover, you know, the Anglo-Sikh Wars. I don't know, you know, um, what they used to do in the, you know, 30s and 40s, but I'm, I'm sure there was some coverage. Right. Whereas these days, it's more modern history. So we've, we're suffering from that, actually. And is there um, suffering the fact that there's a lack of understanding between the different cultures that are actually here or the different types of people that are now living in the UK? There's only so much they can cover in the school curriculum. I think that's the problem. Um, mm. So they try and cover very sort of populist uh, things. And uh, even if they did cover, you know, Sikh history, uh, they'd cover it in very bite-sized chunks. So it's, it's really up to us as a community, maybe up to the Gurdwaras as well, to, you know, um, you know get out quality productions, mm. you know, books and uh, uh, movies and, uh, you know, popular art, you know, like this. Uh, things that inspire people. Um, I mean, there's, there's also, I mean, you mentioned popular art. I mean, people. I've told recently there was a. I downloaded on the Kindle. It was a like a comic, which which was just talking about a Sikh battle as well, and that that was quite interesting. You know. Yes, I mean, there's all sorts of art. You know, I mean, Jason's probably knows more about this type, kind of uh, um, artwork than I do, but. Uh, um, you know, when I was a kid, I used to, you know, go through loads of comics, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Spider-Man and, you know, all these sort of things. You know, yeah. we don't have that, um, you know, in our culture, we don't... Uh, um uh, I, the reason I actually got interested in Sikh history was actually reading a comic on Hari Singh Nalva. And it was, uh, I think, a Amar Chitta Katha type comic or something. And uh, it was quite interesting. But uh, that's what actually got my interest into Sikh history. But it wasn't a Sikh UK battles. publication, though, was it? No, that was, uh, I think that was from India, definitely. Yeah. I just want to say something maybe slightly controversial about artwork. Um, the, um, what I've noticed about a lot of uh, paintings, talking about paintings, um, you know, obviously, uh, the tradition of oil painting is very much a Western, um, a Western development. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking about oil painting, not oil painting, oil yeah, painting, right. okay? Um, you know, because obviously art is universal. Uh, but very often art is directly tied into propaganda. A lot of the art that was produced for the Vatican is church, Catholic church propaganda, right. you know. And uh, same for military, uh, military art. I mean, the military was very much the... Um, well, that was the religion of the British Empire, you know, a military achievement, muscular Christianity. And it's a cult. It's also, um, you'll know about that, yeah, you know. Um, 
And, you know, I don't really like it much. The point is most of the paintings you see are pictures of uh, the imperial power, whether they're French or British or yes. doing their thing. And they'll tend to be, uh, I've got to bring a racial element into it because it's true. They tend to be British soldiers. Um, now, what's not known, or, or white soldiers, um, what's not widely known is that there are a lot of, actually, you know, Indian soldiers, for instance, on the British side, fighting in both the Second World War. And this is Gurkhas, Sikhs, um, Rajputs, Gujaratis, all sorts of people. And they're largely invisible. It's almost like they've been sort of just sort of edited, airbrushed out of history. I think it's only recently during the victory parades um, or, or even the mem memorials uh, what we see it during uh, Remembrance Sunday that there is actually some information given with regards to, uh, by the way, that this one, this is a reef for the Australians, this is a reef for, uh, so it's not just brown people, it could be uh, people from different parts it's of Commonwealth uh, the people. Commonwealth, yeah. yeah I mean, myself, not necessarily, they weren't necessarily British, they could have been from Singapore, they could have been from Australia, they could have been from India, um, but they don't necessarily bring that out, you know. No, that's quite true. I mean, it, 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 very often you have to make, I mean, I have to make that correction for people. Like, yeah. there'll be a, someone will say to me, oh, this is a picture of, um, you know, the British soldiers at Passchendaele. And you actually have to say, um, excuse me, uh, uh, they're Canadian. Oh, right, okay. Right. Um, no, actually, that's an Australian division. Um, right. No, actually, at Vimy Ridge, that was such and such. Well, no, actually, the first gas attack, you know, that's actually, again, those are the Canadian Highlanders or, you know, the New Zealanders or... You know, same with Gallipoli. Um, it's not well known that there were Sikhs or French or um, Gurkhas at Gallipoli. It's always, for some reason, you're always having to fight, push. I get the mm. feeling you're always having to push against something. You're always pushing. I mean, like even that picture, that one you mentioned of the Sopwith camel, you know, um, Malik, the Sikh pilot. Again, I feel like I'm pushing against a wall, you know, and forcing people to see this. Mm. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting one. Okay. Can I just say that it's, um, this kind of art is largely Western art, you know, and they're used to, you know, sort of European models, if you like. So, you know, Jason's actually breaking new ground here, you know, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, other artists who are sort of, you know, thinking, you know, do we really want to show sort of European regiments all the time, you know? Uh, why can't we show, you know, um, other races, um, you know, uh, 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 other types of people. This is an incredible uh, yeah. sketch that you've done here as well. Uh, Talk us through okay. these. Okay. Um, I just want to, in this one, uh, let's see, can everyone see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's two aspects to this. Um, this is a sketch for uh, Sikhs in the Western Desert in World War II. Um, originally, I, you know, got the reference material and I drew. Uh, the Eighth Army, British soldiers, in basically in their truck. Right. Um, but then I thought, well, you know, why not put you know Indian soldiers or Sikhs in there? Simply because you don't see that image right. that often. Yeah. Um, now, what's not widely known is uh, I don't know how you know how familiar people are with the history of the Western, you know, the the Battle of El Alamein and all that kind of thing. Right. Probably but, not. <laughs> but, no, but I don't know, it's not widely known that, um, you know, Montgomery, the victor of Alamein, yeah, he didn't like Indian soldiers. I mean, when I did the commission for the Gurkhas, they actually said to me that, that the, Gurk, the brigade of Gurkhas and sort of the Sikhs and, and the, the, the Indian brigades, they were never given a big part in, in any of uh, Montgomery's battles. You know, they were sort of in reserve or in support. You know, they, they weren't, it, so it was always a, it's not often they actually had a, a decisive role to play. Right. You know, obviously, in uh, Burma, you know, sort of Battle of Imphal, you know, Kahima, the situation was different because, well, you know, the, the Japanese were knocking at the, the gates of India. Um, but, uh, you know, this is, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's almost like a, a cultural attitude and it's a pity that it exists. So you, you, and the only way you're going to break it down is by visually pushing these images in front of people. That's why paintings are important. A picture says a thousand words. Do you think, like, in one sense, there's a, a fiction element and a non-fiction element? When I, when I say uh, non-fiction, effectively, you've, you're do dealing with facts, you're dealing with figures, you're dealing with actual things that took place. And when you look at something like The English Patient, which was written uh, and it depicted a... Um, a the Sikh sapper, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Play by, um, the character's name is Kim. You know, he's a um, lieutenant. He ends up in, uh, I think it's in Italy. Uh, and he's uh, defusing bombs, yeah. uh, and uh, there's, a, there's, a couple, there's some interesting things that come from that in terms of a theme, you know. Uh, first of all, he's a Sikh. Secondly, uh, he, um, he's actually a leader of a group, right? So he's put in a position where he is actually the individual that... Yeah, brings he was an him. officer. He was an officer, position of responsibility. And, uh, and there was a, a, a tremendous amount of respect for him. 
that he was able to do his job in the most amazing way. Now, that's a fictional character. So is there also an opportunity for people that maybe are into writing books, you know, bring about heroes um, of the time, or they, they kind of read and they say, actually, they're inspired by your book, and they go, actually, maybe I could write a story about this, you know, and then, you know, in theory, it could be illustrated or it could be, um, you know, the co you could design the cover, and, you know, so when someone looks at it, but I, I think maybe the problem might be is that, you know, when you look at the, li the literary sh shelves, how much, of, how much do you see that's, you know, romantic and, you know, th there isn't anything necessarily positive. And maybe that's a fault of um, the fact that, you know, th the um, publication has the dominating what sits on the shelves rather than uh, not being exposed to anything different, which could be really interesting, you know, like, you know, The English Patient, you know, Oscar winner, you know. Well, just, just going the movie doesn't the, actually uh, talk that much about the character, but the book does. The book which is, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, one thing I would like to say is that uh, you know during the First World War, um, the the British um, high command, if you like, didn't actually want um, you know Indian soldiers fighting Europeans. Yeah. And uh, you know the reason for that was that uh, you know if the Indian soldiers did well, uh, they'd start getting ideas. You know, um, you know, if we can beat uh, European soldiers, then you know, why why are we we being ruled by you know uh, the Europeans? So you know, for the first few years, they were very reluctant. So and that sort of carried on into you know the Second World War as well. Um, so they were never really put into positions of responsibility. Um, so that's the main reason uh, that they weren't put into you know the, the sort of um, almost the uh, you know sort of uh, most important sort of. Uh, Sort of uh, positions in a battle, so yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. 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 Um, just what I'm saying is very relevant because um, I've just got a commission come through on Friday. It was organised through um, the well-known uh, Sikh martial arts and cage fighter guy, um, Prab um, Bakhra. Was it MMA? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, he, he's um, a friend of mine, and you know, it's going to be. It's been commissioned by the Bahra collection, and it's actually to paint the Battle of Festu in uh, 1915, where. Um, Lal Singh uh, won the Indian Order of Merit medal and uh, Lieutenant Smythe won the Victoria Cross. In fact, the Sikhs should have been given a Victoria Cross as well. Um, but they didn't. They basically carried boxes of hand grenades through to a, a frontline trench that was under pressure. Wow, but what's not well known is that uh, the Sikh battalion, the 15th Ludhiana Sikhs, were actually sent in to reinforce a failed attack by the HLI, the Highland Light Infantry. So there's a clear case of uh, an Indian regiment being sent to the assistance of a British regiment that was in trouble. Right, yeah, it's, it's some incredible history there, isn't there? It's just that, you know, there's so many things that you're talking about, even, you know, you, so many people on the street don't actually know what's going on, you know? Well, I think that's the problem, Savvy, that, uh, you know, there's really no research going on in this field. Um, you know, if you look at the number of books on um, Sikhs in World War I, uh, you could probably count them on one hand, you know, if that. Um, there's just nobody out there doing research, you know. We're getting the, the anniversary of, uh, you know, the, uh, the opening of World War I coming up now. So mm. there's a sort of flurry of interest. So I know there's a, some books coming out now. Um, but, uh, you know, till now, there just hasn't been that much interest. So hopefully, you know, the, the anniversary of World War I is going to provoke, you know, a lot more interest and uh, hopefully a lot more research as well. A memorial, a memorial idea. That's right, yes. I mean, there, there, there is this idea of uh, a memorial to, you know, the uh, almost the 80, th I think there's just slightly more than 80,000 Sikhs who died during World War I mm. and World War II, and, and that's really needed. I you think know, there's we a just don't have that. in Brighton, I think they've got already, haven't they? They've got that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yes, we don't really have um, a sort of iconic, you know, Sikh only uh, memorial at the moment. Uh, and. Uh, Hopefully, you know, we can get somebody like Jason or even Jason himself to, you know, to, to actually um, uh, to, to, to actually design one, um, yeah, you know, great. and and I know I've, se I've seen one of your paintings or, or drawings, you know, to that effect, really, really front, good, yeah. you know. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Maybe we can show that. Yeah, yeah sure. Nope. The heavy one, isn't it? Oh, man. That's a, a sketch for a World War One idea. Um, right. But... Uh, I mean, although that's a painting, the, one of the ambitions I have is to produce a large sculpture over life size, only one and a half life size yeah. of Sikh soldiers in battle, because I think yeah. that would be good. It's got to be figurative and representational. I think it's, uh, 
it's difficult for people who are not familiar with art to look at abstract images. Right. Um, right. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're visually literate, it's easy because you mm. can understand abstract art. But for most people out there, they actually need a, a, a figurative representation. So that's something I'd like to do as well, you know, what we'd like to do. Okay. Well, uh, we're getting a signal now that we're, we're getting to the end. Um, I just want to say thanks very much for um, you know, coming in and uh, spending all your time, taking time to do research as well with regards to um, looking at um, what would be nice to bring in and show people in the public. Before we go, um, very quickly, an email address that you may have that, to contact you. Um, it would be really good if, if, if someone email. wants to send you an email and say, hey, I like that, can I have a copy of that, or I'd like you to do me one. You know? Oh, yeah, okay. My name is jason.askew at btinternet.com. That's J-A-S-O-N. J-A-S-O-N dot A-S-K-E-W at B-T-Internet dot com. Okay, well, that's, that's great. Thanks, Jason. I right, thought I'd get an advert in there for you, you know, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, especially with all the great work you're doing. Um, brilliant. And, Paul, thank you for coming in. I really appreciate your time. Uh, keep plugging away with the Kindle and all those other books. We need you, yeah. uh, and we need you to do all that. And we need you, Gulfrey, uh, to help champion the cause uh, in the Gurdwaras, set an example for the other ones to say, look, this is a brilliant piece of work, you know, this is something that we need to do, this is sorry, something that we really say, need. Sorry, just to interrupt, Savi, um, this is actually the anniversary of the Battle of Shilianwala. It is, um, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. it's very appropriate that we're mm. actually discussing these issues today. Uh, I'll just pass it over to Gurpreet now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to sign off and say <laughs> okay. thanks very much for uh, joining you. us. I uh, appreciate it. Why, why, why you go Khalsa? Why, why you for